In this video, we review Azure Administrative Units. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos, and welcome to Seralto Studio South. I'm recording at a different location while I try to escape the cold weather for a while. Administrative units went GA recently. In this video, we go over what they are and when to use them. Before that, please take a second to like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Also, check out my new udemy.com course on Windows Virtual Desktop. The link is below. An administrative unit is a container for users and groups, providing the ability to delegate administrative rights to select administrators. Here's the problem that administrative units tries to solve. Let's say you have a large organization all within the same Azure AD tenant. From a business structure, the company is broken into autonomous regions such as Europe and Americas. The Europe help desk needs to reset passwords for Europe users. And the American help desk needs to reset passwords for American users. Without administrative units, giving the help desk role to either locations will give them rights to change passwords to the entire directory. With administrative units, we create an administrative unit for Europe and another for Americas. Add the respective users to each admin unit and delegate permissions to the region's help desk. That way, only the local help desk can change passwords for that region's users. Administrative units don't have to be regional. The same would apply if business units in an organization were autonomous, sales and manufacturing, for example. That's what administrative units are for, delegating user and group management to a subset of users in the directory. Something I noticed with administrative units is a strong focus on security and the prevention of someone other than global or privileged role admins from modifying admin units. Let's look at the permissions around admin units. To create or update an administrative unit, you must be a global admin or privileged role admin. This is a list of options for administrating admin units pulled from the Microsoft documentation site. Notice that Graph, PowerShell, and Portal can be used to manage admin groups. The permissions available include creating and deleting admin groups, adding or removing members individually or by a CSV file, and assigning admin unit administrators. Dynamic membership is not supported. Dynamic membership may sound like a good idea, but in experience, sometimes changes are made to attributes that may not be known to the group that administers Azure AD. When that happens, it can cause a lot of problems with dynamic memberships. Imagine in our previous example where all American users were dynamically added based on the location attribute. Now, someone decides to change the value of America to South America, North America, and Central America. All the America users could fall outside the scope of the administrative unit. But it could be worse. Say that hypothetical attribute was replicated from Windows AD and someone other than the global or privileged identity administrator modifies that attribute to move them into an administrative unit they have control of. That could circumvent the integrity of the administrative unit. While we're on the topic, let's talk about group management and admin units. Administrative units can be used to manage groups. Here's a list of permissions available from the Microsoft documentation. What is not supported is extending management to the users in the group. So for example, if we add the European user group to the admin unit, permissions to modify properties, membership, and licensing can be granted to that group. But those permissions do not extend to members of the group. Users have to be added to the admin unit to be managed. Groups alone will not work. This is due to similar reasons we don't do dynamic membership. Anyone with rights to modify group membership could modify administrative unit membership, circumventing the security of the administrative unit. This would be more problematic if groups were replicated from Windows AD to Azure AD. Changes to Windows AD group membership would change administrative unit membership. That's why users have to be added directly to admin units to be in the scope of management. The permissions available for user management in an administrative unit is listed below. A user delegated permissions to an administrative unit can change user properties, passwords, and licenses. 
block and on-block sign-ins, and manage MFA credentials. Also notice Microsoft 365 Admin Center is an option for user management. Something to keep in mind, this is an Azure AD Premium feature. Administrative unit admins need a premium license, either P1 or P2. Administrative unit members do not need a premium license to be managed. They can be on the free tier or higher. Also, administrative units leverage Azure Privileged Identity Management. I have a video that goes over PIM in more detail. The link is above. Up next, we're going to walk through the steps of setting up an administrative unit and adding users from the portal and from a CSV file, as well as groups. Then we'll add an administrator and test their ability to manage the users and groups. Join me in the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start by creating an administrative unit. Go to Azure AD and Administrative Units. Click Add to create an administrative unit. Give it a name and a description. This one is called Sales AU. And I'll give it a description. Go to Assign Roles. Here we can see the RBAC roles available to the administrative unit. We can select one and assign a user rights to the admin unit. Each role has a description on the right. Let's give the user Travis the user administrator role to this administrative unit. We'll click on user administrator and search for the user and add. Go to review and create and click create. Once it's created, go to administrative units and select the one we just created. From here, we can view properties, the users in the administrative unit, and the groups in the administrative unit. They're currently empty. We'll add some shortly. We can view roles and administrators. We can modify roles and administrators from this location. Next, let's add a member. We can directly add a member from the Add Member option at the top. From there, search for your user. And then click Select. This works well for a few users, but if you have a lot of users, you may want to use a CSV file instead. I have a small CSV file. It only has two names, but it would work the same with more users. In the portal, go to Bulk Operations. From here, we can bulk add or bulk remove members or download a list of users. Select Bulk Add Members. We'll start by downloading a template. This is optional, but it gives you a CSV file format you can use for the import. Let's open that file. The file needs a version number and the header user UPN, and then a list of UPNs. Leave the first two lines of the template as is and enter a list of users after that. Save and close the CSV file. Now that we have the CSV file finished, Select the search under Upload Your CSV File. Select the file we just modified and click Submit once it's selected. You should see a succeed message once the file is uploaded. Close and go back to Users. You may need to refresh. There are the users we added. Let's add a group next. I added test users three and four to a group called sales. Let's take a look at that group. Here are the test users, test three user three and test four user four, members of the sales AAD group. Let's go back to administrative units. 
and go to our cells AU administrative unit. And next we add the cells group to the cells AU admin unit. There it is. We'll select that group and hit refresh. If everything seems to work okay but it doesn't show in the portal, that's normal. There's a delay of a couple minutes before changes in the portal will show up. There it is. Now that we have the cells group added to the administrative unit, let's give my user rights to administer the group in the admin unit. Go to Roles and Administrators and select Group Administrator. Here you can see existing assignments, eligible assignments, and expired assignments. Administrative Units ties into Privileged Identity Management or PIM. Eligible assignments are assignments that can be enabled on this administrative unit. If you're not familiar with Privileged Identity Management, check out my video on the subject. There's also a location to view the description. This provides a summary of the role and the role permissions. There's also a location for role settings. This is again part of PIM. Let's go back to Assignments and add an assignment. Click Add Assignments at the top of the page. Notice that the role and scope type are selected and can't be changed. At the bottom, go to Select Members and click No Members Selected. From here, I'll add my account. Click Next. From this page, you can make it eligible or active. I'll select Active and keep it a permanent assignment. Next, we enter a justification for this assignment. Once that's entered, click Assign. Now my user has Group Administrator and User Administrator rights to this administrative unit. Next, we're going to test changing settings for the users and groups that are part of the administrative unit, as well as user and groups that are not part of the administrator unit. I'll start by logging in as my Travis test user. This is the account with active roles on the administrator unit. Here I am logged in. Let's change group membership for the sales group. I'll go to Active Directory, Groups, and find the Cells AAD group. Let's go to Members, and I'll add a member. Test user for this example. That worked as expected. Let's go back to Groups. I have a group called Cloud Group. I'll go to that next. This group is not in the administrative unit, so it falls outside of the scope of management for my user. I'll go to Members. And notice I don't have the ability to add a member. That shows this account is limited to group management only for groups within the scope of the administrative unit. Keep in mind, if this group is replicated from Windows AD, there are limited actions we can do in Azure AD. The example I just went through uses an Azure AD group. Let's go to Users next. Test User 1 and Test User 2 are in the administrative unit. Let's go to Test 1, User 1 next. Notice I have the option to edit the user. Many of these settings are sourced from Windows AD, but I can block sign-ins and change the usage location. I could also change licensing information. Next, I'll go back to Users. This time I'll select Test 3, User 3. This user is in the Cells AAD group, and that group is in the scope of the administrative unit, but the user is not in the administrative unit directly. Remember, the scope of administrative units does not apply to members of a group. 
users have to be added directly. And you can see here that I do not have the option to edit settings for this user. If I go to licensing, the option to assign a license is not available. That does it. That shows how to create an administrative unit, add users and groups, and assign roles for the administrative unit to a user. That's an overview of administrative units and how to set them up in the portal. Take some time to plan how to organize users and groups in administrative units before deploying them. A geo-based organization may work well for one company, while department-based may work better for others. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for new content. Thanks for watching.